Floyd. Floyd. I'll knock you out. You sick. You got it. Welcome to the motherfucking relay. We're covering today's top boxing news. Ow! Since this woman beater want to keep talking shit, I'm finna clean you up real quick. Tank, 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 tank. I am so happy that you think I look like a French bulldog and you consider me ugly. Because you beat up bitches who you consider cute. I'm glad I'm ugly to you, nigga. Nigga, go win some belts. Go win some belts, nigga. You steady up out here tweeting, 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 tweeting. Is you that fucking lonely? Go and find you some friends. Oh, and I want to ask you a question. I thought women was supposed to suck dick. Why is you on Ryan dick so hard? <laughs> oh, Ryan dick just came back that he wasn't dirty. And he ain't even tested the B sample yet. Exactly. Why are you so worried about Devin Haney business? What is wrong with you, boy? Ain't you supposed to be focusing on you a fight? Nigga, if you ain't have Floyd and right there holding your hand, I don't know where you would be at. Them niggas got to hold your hand, pick your fights for you. That's why you're never going to get inside the ring with Shakur. That's why you haven't fought Devin. That's why you fought a weight drain Ryan. Because he's a coward. Nigga, you was never my type, nigga. I ain't never looked at you like, oh, Javante, look good. You midget ass nigga. <laughs> you don't go somewhere. You think I care about you thinking I'm pretty? I'm engaged. I have a man. You can't keep a woman because you beat all your bitches up. I don't know if they agree with things Clarissa Shields says, or does, but I agree with everything she said here. Javante Davis as a boxer, man. as an individual, as a man, has very few redeemable qualities. I look at him as a degenerate, a scumbag, and a poster child for scumbags. Because how many times do you see this guy get in trouble, and it's never for anything you can respect? It's always because he's putting his hands on some broad. Always. When he's not doing that, he's slamming into pregnant women with a car that he shouldn't even be driving, because he doesn't have a license. The size of a toddler. Javante Davis made some defamatory comments about Clarissa Shields' as aesthetic personally. I don't think he can handle her. He's too small, and she's got too much ass. Yeah. Too much ass for a manlet like him. A midget. A worm. But all fuckery aside, what really caught my attention about what Clarissa Shields has said is how all of a sudden Javante Davis has become Ryan Garcia's biggest fan, his biggest supporter. He's all entangled in the situation between Ryan and Devin going up to bat for Ryan when he was the same one that accused him of using steroids, accused him of juicing, so that a year later you can defend him when he's caught. Why? Because he's a fucking coward. That's why. Don't you see what's going on? It's what I told you. He wants a victory over Devin by proxy. In his own mind, he tells himself, well, Ryan beat Devin and I beat Ryan, so it's like I beat Devin. It's not. Triangle theories in a sport of boxing don't work. Case in point. Jermaine Taylor beat Bernard Hopkins. Kelly Pavlik beat Jermaine Taylor. And Bernard Hopkins beat Kelly Pavlik. What? The point is, this guy was too big of a chicken shit <laughs> to go in there and beat Devin himself. Somebody else does it, and he wants to claim the victory. That's what it is. That's why he's supporting Ryan. Because he's a coward. The momentum was building. You have to understand that. Devin Haney's brand, before it was derailed by Ryan Garcia, which is a separate matter, it was growing. And there was a growing demand for a Devin Haney versus Javante Davis fight. But Javante didn't want it, and he was running out of excuses not to do it. The walls were closing in, so that when Ryan Garcia goes in there and shocks the world, Javante can breathe a, a sigh of relief. Don't you see? He's jubilant. He's practically celebrating. It's the same guy that was telling you last year, Ryan's on the juice, telling you this year that he isn't. You wait up until a guy tests positive for the juice to decide you don't think he's on the juice. Or is this how desperate you are? To claim Ryan's victory over him as your own. He's a fucking coward. <laughs> You sign a contract to fight Frank Martin, you announce the fight, and this is when you decide you want to confront Devin. I mean, where was this energy when he was right there with you at 135? As a champion, WBC champion, subsequently undisputed champion, you didn't try to fight the guy. Clarissa Shields sees it. 
Everybody sees it. So you can wait up until after Ryan fights him to decide you want to go to his hotel, jump in his face, start talking about this and that. You could have did that before. Yeah, but he's a fucking coward. So how one is cowardly as Javante Davis could rise to popularity in any spectrum is beyond me, lacking any semblance of redeemable qualities, reflection of what is a morally ambiguous society that celebrates the villains, celebrates what doesn't need to be celebrated. Cowardice. Javante is a fucking coward and a dick-sucking pole smoker, and so are his fans, and it's about time somebody said it. Yeah. Clarissa said it. You twerp, the little punk. Clarissa Shields ain't my cup of tea, but I'll tell you this, I don't think Clarissa Shields would spend anywhere near as much time running from a fight as he has. She's got more balls than he does. No surprise he paints his nails and wears a purse. It's because he's a bitch. Men's lightweight news, former unified lightweight champion Vasil Lomachenko says, my career is almost over. Something you really don't want to hear going into a title fight, though it's a title fight against George Cambodia. And I think even today's version of Vasil Lomachenko dominates George Cambodia. You don't think you're underestimating George? I don't. I think Vasil Lomachenko is going to beat him. I think Vasil Lomachenko is going to stop him. The 36-year-old came into professional boxing late, focusing on winning a second Olympic gold medal instead of chasing world titles. But Lomachenko made up for lost time in the pros, becoming the fastest man to win world titles in three weight classes in just 18 fights. Now, after over a decade as a professional, the Ukrainian admitted his fighting days are numbered. If you're talking about ages in boxing, I'm an old man. Lomachenko told Fox Sports Australia, but my career is almost done, of course. How many years it's going to be? One, two, three, that's it. But I still think I have a little bit of power. It's a hard question when I will retire. Exactly. You can see that something was taken out of Vasil Lomachenko in that Devin Haney fight. Not in terms of physicality, but mentality. That loss hurt him. To come so close to finally achieving that undisputed dream and to have it robbed from you. Because I think he was robbed. I don't care what anybody says. Lomachenko has been boxing above his natural weight class for six years, facing much bigger and stronger men than him at lightweight. Recent defeats to Teofimo Lopez, who beat him legitimately, and Devin Haney, who beat him illegitimately have taken its toll on the veteran's body and he has now admitted it's becoming harder to recover after fights at this stage every fight is hard it's hard to recover after fights i don't know what will happen with my body after this fight and that's why i can't give you an answer to this question of when i will retire and this is the guy you think is gonna stop george george cambodia that's never been stopped i do because i don't see what george can do to keep loma off of him he's not faster he's not stronger lighter on his feet or a better boxer that once the opening bell sounds muscle memory is gonna kick in autopilot even though he's 36 years old and perhaps has a waning desire a waning interest in boxing i think he still has enough to beat george i think he still has enough to stop george in his own neck of the woods because he knows he can't leave it up to the judges look at what happened the last time the way i thought it would happen what i expected what i predicted was that Vasil Lomachenko would beat Devin Haney, which I think he did, but he got robbed, and then he would move on from that into a Shakur Stevenson fight. That it would be Shakur Stevenson that retires Vasil Lomachenko. That's what I thought would happen. It still might. As Bob Arum has declared that he wants to make Shakur Stevenson versus Vasil Lomachenko as a WBC and IBF lightweight world title unification fight later this year. If Loma beats George Cambosos this weekend and Shakur beats Artem Hadatunian on July 6th. Artie Hadatunafish. That's a guy, that's a guy that was given Frank Martin fits last year. That's the guy who everybody conveniently forgot arguably beat Frank Martin last year. That's that guy, the Olympian. Shakur is fighting him. In what is his final fight under his existing top rank deal, it would seem that for the future, top rank still has interest in him, which speaks to what I told you before, that while he might want to try out free agency, top rank still has most of what he wants and most of what he needs. So he needs to keep that channel open. I thought they would have tried to make a Lomachenko versus Navarrete fight. Instead of this one, instead of this fight, because Navarrete, he doesn't plan on going anywhere. He doesn't plan on leaving them the same way that Shakur Stevenson, but boxing, boxing is the theater of the unexpected, full of surprises. I guess this is their way of keeping Shakur Stevenson within arm's reach. He wants the Vasil Lomachenko fight. 
He's always wanted that fight. He's been vocal about it. And here at the end of his existing contract, he might get it later on in the year. I think he should keep that channel open, keep things amicable between himself and top rank because you never know. That's not a bridge that you want to burn. Two out of three lightweight titles are on this side of things, not counting yours. And that makes three. So Vasil Lomachenko, provided he goes in there this weekend, wins, and I think he's going to, you go in there with Adi Hadatuna Fish in July, you beat him, take care of business, and give a better account of yourself than you did with Edwin De Los Santos, you might line yourself up for a big fight. I feel like Shakur shouldn't worry about Javante, shouldn't worry about Devin, shouldn't worry about Teofimo or any of them. He needs to focus on himself, his own career, what he's doing, building his brand, and putting on a better showing than he did the last time, because that hurt his stock, you know? As far as Vasil Lomachenko, what am I supposed to say? They robbed a guy in his last fight, and I know that that hurt him mentally, spiritually, to be so close to that last brass ring and have it robbed from you. I think he has enough left that he can beat a George Kambosos, but if and when the time comes, I don't think he has enough to beat Shakur Stevenson. I don't. I questioned whether or not he still had enough to beat Emmanuel Navarrete if he were the champion that he ended up fighting later on this year. Upon Vasil Lomachenko's ascent to popularity, I always said, enjoy him while he lasts because he's got a young man's style. But he ain't gonna last long. And that's not a knock on him. It's just that he had an extended amateur career, two Olympic runs, so that only gives him but so much time to make it in the pros. And he's had a successful boxing career. He's been a champion at three weights. He's made some money. He can still make some money. Still win some belts. He's gonna win a belt this weekend. If nothing else, I think he can win the IBF title. I think he can beat George Cambosos. The with Shakur Stevenson. If he does end up facing him, he's facing the end of the road. Finally, a bit of news you may want to pay attention to. DAZN and the World Boxing Council, the WBC, announce a global partnership. DAZN, the world's leading sports streaming platform and the global home of boxing today announces a groundbreaking partnership with the World Boxing Council. This historic collaboration will redefine how fans engage with boxing, providing unparalleled access to premium content, fights, and events, whilst bolstering the growth of the sport worldwide. The multi-year partnership represents a game-changing moment for boxing, uniting two powerhouses of the sport to ensure fans never miss a moment of action with exclusive interviews, original documentaries, compelling behind-the-scenes content, and live events, including conventions like WBC's annual conventions and ranking updates, all set to appear on the DAZN platform. This partnership will offer a more engaging and complete position. Proposition for fans worldwide. This content and more will be available to fans from today on DAZN and joins an unparalleled portfolio of boxing and other combat footage featuring stars such as Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury, Yar. Deontay Wilder, and Ryan Gersha, who everybody's talking about right now, commenting on this transformative partnership. Mauricio Suleiman, the president of the WBC, stated, the WBC is thrilled with this unique opportunity to bring fight fans so many stories that boxing provides worldwide. Every fighter's story is a script for Hollywood, and through the WBC Zone on the Zone, intimate and exciting programming will be available for all to enjoy, as well as events, fight cards, tutorials, and an endless array of exclusive content. So why should we care? Why should you pay attention? Because the alphabets, in this instance, the WBC, lean in the direction of wherever the money flows, wherever the money goes, and the money is going through the zone. So it's no coincidence that the World Boxing Council decided to align themselves with them. At a time when Matchroom Group and Pitch International have aligned with each other, a global partnership and a minority investment in Matchroom. The landmark deal sees Pitch International complete a significant investment in Matchroom with a view to collaborating on international media rights, huge global events, and major sports partnerships across the Matchroom Group portfolio, including Professional Darts Corporation, Matchroom Boxing, World Snooker, and Matchroom Multisport. The alliance promises the future-proof the position of both Matchroom and Pitch International as 
global market leaders in the world of sport. As part of its agreement, Pitch International will acquire a minority stake in Matchroom Sport with the founding Hearn family retaining majority control. So why is this important? It's just another example of what I've been telling you for the last five or six years, that you can say what you want about Matchroom, but they're a lot more successful than, say, the PBC. Oh, come on. No, no. I'm not going to pass up an opportunity to gloat about how I was right and they were wrong. And they've been wrong. That the zone is doing just fine, the way I told you. Where they told you that the zone wouldn't last and it would go bankrupt and it would go under, I told you they would thrive. They would grow. Some content creators would have had you believe that the zone wasn't going to make it and Matchroom doesn't know what they're doing. But look at where we are. Look at where we are in 2024. The relationship that alphabet organizations in the sport of boxing have with promoters is symbiotic. They're going to lean in the direction of wherever the money is. So when you you see that the World Boxing Council is aligning itself with the DAZN platform, what does that tell you? Matchroom is there, Golden Boy is there, some other smaller promotional outfits. But what does that tell you? You know that Mauricio's a parasite, you know that he's a bloodsucker, and you know that anywhere they're making money from the sport of boxing, he's bound to show up. So if he's aligned himself with the zone, it can't be because they're bankrupt. It can't be because they're going under, like so many content creators would have had you believe. Content creators that talk down the zone, talk down Eddie Hearn, but talk up Al Heyman, when everything you say about Eddie Hearn actually applies to Al Heyman. You want to talk about fucking off money? Look no further than Al Heyman and all the money he fucked off, all the Waddle and Reed money. What you did was you projected the inadequacies of Al Heyman onto Eddie Hearn for no reason other than he's a foreigner. You projected the inadequacies of the PBC and their partnered platforms onto DAZN when DAZN is still in boxing, and they're not. Fox is out, so is Showtime. Told you this would happen. You think a bunch of bozos on YouTube who can't read above the ninth grade level are gonna give you an accurate forecast of the fiscal landscape for boxing when they don't even pay for it. Idiots. Propping up the hapless buffoons at the PBC who fancy themselves business moguls just because they throw on a suit and taper their mustaches to where they look drawn on. Leonard! The real prowess of their business savvy is measured in how they manage to run Showtime Boxing into the ground after 37 years in the sport. More than how thin your goatee is. Or how many witty catchphrases they can come up with. Dead zone. Dead. Remember that one? You know what's dead? Showtime boxing. That's what's dead. That was funny for about five seconds till Fox left the sport of boxing and Showtime followed him. But what do I know? I'm just the guy that's been telling you for five or six years, not only would the zone do all right, they would thrive, they would grow, whereas Showtime... Hey. Americans tend to lean towards things that sound good more than they are good. Things that look good. It looks all right. But how does it actually function? So it's no surprise that so many of them were fooled by the snake oil salesmen at the PBC who were only really taking shots at Matchroom and DAZN because they were a threat. And they knew they were a threat. They have outlasted you. Your fighters are leaving. You're barely doing any shows. I told you it would come to this. I told you so.